This is the famous German tank of World War II, the Tiger. Um, this is, we now know it is Tiger I because there was a subsequent model of the King or the Royal Tiger after it. The Tiger's one of those vehicles that has an awful lot of myths that are built up around it. But factually, remember this is a product of Hitler influencing German tank design. What happens is he reads the reports of the German tanks going into France in 1940, where they meet bigger tanks like the Charby, their armour uh, firepower is just not enough to penetrate some of those tanks, the French tanks, and mainly as well the British Matilda II. Hitler reads reports of the German 37mm anti-tank gun bouncing off the thick armour of the Matilda II. So he starts the Tiger project and he starts it with a competition between Porsche and Henschel. Porsche comes along, they come up with a uh, petrol electric drive system. Um, they're given a year to try and put a prototype vehicle together. Henschel goes back to one of its earlier designs for a breakthrough tank that first started back in 1937. They upgrade that and they come forward. Both of these vehicles are paraded for Hitler in the uh, April of 1942. Porsche starts the production of 100 hulls thinking he's going to win, but actually after a series of tests, it's Henschel that actually gets the contract. Um, don't forget as well, in Germany, the vehicles competitions are put out to different companies. The turret for those vehicles, they're actually made by an independent uh, third party. And in this case, it's Krupp who puts the turrets together. Now, the Henschel vehicle is rushed into production. They have, as so many times, have teething troubles, some engine issues, um, some uh, transmission issues there. And the very first Tigers are pushed out to the Eastern Front late in 1942. Now, what happens then? Of course, you've got a tank here that is changing German tank philosophy. Previously, they had a very good balance between mobility, firepower, and armor protection. Here, the Germans have gone much more towards firepower and armor over the, uh, the third component, mobility. Now, the mobility on this tank is still actually good. Um, we, we have a tendency to always say about the Tiger, oh, it's too big, too heavy. Actually, it was only a couple of miles an hour slower than the Sherman going at about 28 miles an hour. And the ground pressure beneath its tracks was actually less than the ground pressure beneath the Sherman because they had such wide tracks. So again, we have to be careful when we look at the tank that we don't fall into the traps of all these um, sort of myths that have grown up around it. Um, one of the problems the Germans have, because it's so big, mobility in the sense of strategic mobility, how do you get it around the various places or operational mobility to the areas of the battlefield? They need to put it on trains. And for that, they change the size of the tracks and you take one each of the outer road wheels off the torsion bar suspensions. Now, this is a very complex suspension system they put on the Tiger. It's got 16 torsion bars, eight on each side, and they interleave road wheels. And the problem, of course, there you've got is if one of those inner road wheels gets broken, it could mean that you actually have to take up to nine other road wheels off to get to that inner one. And that's a bit of a maintenance issue, of course, in wartime. The other problem of that interleaving system, of course, is mud, ice, certainly on the Russian front, can pack in and cause trouble. But overall, mobility of the tank is fairly good. The engine, the famous HL Maybach HL210, um, after 251 models, they, they changed it to the HL230. It's about 650 horsepower. That is struggling because the original design weight is about 45 tonnes. It's now crept over 50 tonnes. So they do have a bit of an issue there in terms of horsepower. So with armour protection, you've got 10 centimetres of armour on the front, 8 centimetres on the side. Even that's very thick for something like a 75 millimetre gun Sherman to penetrate. Very thick on the front mantlet. And of course, you've got this amazingly powerful 88 millimetre gun. Um, the KWK 36 uh, is a 56 calibre length of gun. Um, that's tremendously accurate and very, very good armour penetration qualities. It's also got a very good high explosive round, which meant that was again very good for attacking armoured uh, or infantry positions or artillery positions in the open. Um, and overall, the tank is a very, very impressive bit of kit. 
But of course, what we must remember, in the Second World War, the Germans just cannot build enough of them. They are hugely expensive and they take a lot of time and production, facilities and parts. Uh, you could actually build four Sturmgeschutzes for the price of one Tiger tank like this. So again, that balance, only making about 1,300 of them, the chances of you as an Allied tank crewman bumping into the Tiger in World War II are going to be very slim. But if you do bump into one, you're going to remember it.